Welcome to DNA Today. I'm Dave Miklos. And I'm Jan Vitkowski, and we're here at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory talking about DNA in the news. And today's news is about man's best friend, dog. Now, we all know that dogs come in many shapes and sizes, from that teeny tiny yappy chihuahua to that great huge lumbering Great Dane. Uh, recent research has shown that a gene is in fact responsible for most of this difference between the size of a little tiny dog and a great huge one. I go to the Westminster Kennel Club every year, and so I'm very familiar with seeing this vast range in, uh, in dog size. Remarkably, of course, uh, dogs are all the same species, and yet they have this, again, this extreme, extreme range from the tiniest to the biggest. And you're telling me that it's a change in one gene that produces this? It seems to be. A, a group of researchers headed by scientists at the National Human Genome Research Institute uh, sequenced the genes from small dogs and large dogs and found that a difference of one letter in the genetic code of one gene seems to determine most of the difference in size between the small and the large dogs. So one version of the gene was present almost exclusively in the small dogs, but absent virtually from the big dogs. Mm. And this gene is a gene called insulin-like growth factor 1, uh, IGF-1, which as its name suggests is, uh, is related to insulin. As we all know, insulin is very important in regulating blood sugar, regulating metabolism in general, and is known to be involved in regulating size in mammals. Yeah, especially bone and muscle growth, which of course accounts for size. The interesting thing about this mutation is it looks as if it crops, cropped up 12 or 14,000 years ago, which was really before the close, close association with humans. So the implication is that humans found several sizes of dogs around, quite big ones and quite small ones, and then accentuated those size differences as they bred different breeds for their uses. Right. Now, size is not the only thing that distinguishes different breeds of dogs. They also differ in their behavior. Yeah, they, you know, you don't well, want to be different. Right, right. And does, does this research suggest that we might find behavior, uh, genes for behavioral differences in dogs? Well, the, as you know, the ability to look for tiny differences in genes among lots and lots of living things is possible now. And almost certainly we'll see that some of the genes that help determine behavior will also have small changes. But in all likelihood, we're going to see that those small changes are not enough to produce behavior. In fact, we have the environment, the training of the master, and so forth. 